What's up guys? Today we're continuing our series how to install asphalt shingles. This is Atlas edition. We're here with Paul Caseri, a product manager at Atlas. And Paul is going to show us how to install asphalt shingles by Atlas properly. That's right. question to you is do you guys recommend drip edge or gutter apron we absolutely recommend drip edge it's not a requirement for our installation but for best practices we absolutely do recommend so it's not going to void the warranty it will not void the warranty okay uh gutter apron or drip edge uh, either or drip edge um primarily okay sounds good uh, second question I have about synthetic felt paper. Obviously, everybody went synthetic last few years. What will happen to the warranty if you install um, staples? Well, the problem with staples is uh, staples cause little tears inside the fabric itself or on the fabric itself. So water will get in and behind and you know eventually into the house. So um, all manufacturers that I know of, Atlas included, recommends cap staples. And that will prevent the water and that will prevent the tearing as you walk across the deck. So if you do use staples, um, it will void your warranty when it comes to uh, water infiltration and those types of things. Okay, so you must have cap nail, use cap nails to have the best warranty. Absolutely, especially if you're gonna have this exposed for any amount of time, absolutely use cap nails. Okay, and how does it affect the warranty if you don't like, does it go from like 25 to 10 or like? If, if you use staples, is that what you're asking? Yes. Uh, then uh, the, you know the warranty is basically void for water infiltration. Okay. So if if we see a uh, manuf you know if we see a, a claim come through for water filtration, if it gets into the house, that's the first thing that we're going to look at. Uh, did they use staples or not? All right, awesome. So we installed drip edge. We install synthetic felt paper. We use the cap nails. What's next? We have to use uh, starters. You have to use the starter shingles. Can you use the three tabs? You can use a three tab. Uh, you know, we do sell dedicated starter shingles as well. Sure. Um, it depends what kind of warranty you're looking for. If you're working for, looking for a system warranty, which we call our signature select uh, warranty, then you'll have to use starter. our starter. If you just go for a generic warranty out of the box for a shingle warranty, you can use uh, three tab. Uh, but you definitely recommend your starter. Absolutely, it's made for that purpose. Okay, let's, let's look at that. So it's this wide, wow. Why do you need such a wide starter? Well, we make these starter shingles online, so uh, because of our manufacturing capacities, and then it's, uh, it's a universal shingle starter, so it fits all of our shingles, anywhere from our um, Pro Lamb, Pinnacle Pristine, up to our Storm Master. I so think it's the widest starter I've seen. Yeah, it probably is on the market today, yep. Okay, let's install it. So, the first thing you want to do is to, um, we want to cut some of this shingle off because we don't want our seams to catch up on the run when you put field shingles on. Okay. So we want to make sure that, they're, that the seams, as you align shingles on your course, sure. they don't line up. So we recommend cutting six inches off of here. So we'll just, we'll just eyeball it and we'll cut six inches off. And then we'll go ahead with the install. So you want to put the sealant line down towards the bottom. You want to make sure you overlap minimum of a, of a quarter inch up to three quarters of an inch. And then you can just uh, put your nails right above the seal line there. Nail placement is uh, four to six nails evenly spaced an inch off the sides. So About a quarter of an inch. inch. One inch off. Let me move. And it. if I wouldn't have a drip edge, it's still quarter inch of the edge? Yeah, it depends what your drip edge is. If you have a flat drip edge, you got to go a quarter inch off. If, if you have a drip edge that, is, uh, that comes out a little bit right here, so that's a natural overlap, you, you can go flush. Okay. What if I would have plywood? If you have plywood, you have to be at least a quarter of an inch off. So you said one inch? Yep. One inch, you just go down a little bit lower, so right about here. There you go, perfect. Oh, damn it, I'm gonna smack my head again on this damn thing. Perfect, great job. Do, do we need to install starter at the edges? Um, you can install start up the, up the uh, rake side if you want to. We can show you how to do that. All right. How do I nail this? Uh, the same as you did down here. So you want to go, uh, you know, on the you know, on the longer pieces uncut. Just do six nails. Perfect. We'll continue to work up. Okay. Get that side lined up. There we go. Come down a little bit. All right. 
All right. Let's finish it off. So what are we installing today? Pinnacle so, Pristine. Pinnacle Pristine featured in Scotch Guard, our 42 inch shingle. Is that the biggest one on the market? This is the biggest one in the United States, absolutely. Uh, 42 inches wide, and it gives us a six inch exposure. Is it one square here? This is a little bit more than one square. Okay. So when we get installing our shingles, you wanna do an offset. Um, you wanna do an offset. You know, again, so you have a pattern on your roof. Uh, your seams don't line up. So this one, of course, you want to use the uh, full shingle. For, for this shingle here, you can do four or six nails, depending on your code. If it's a six nail requirement, then of course you have to use six nails. Okay. Out of the box, we only require four nails for 130 mile an hour wind warranty. Okay. So that's a huge benefit for the contractors and homeowners. So again, when you install your nails one inch from the sides, if you're going to do four nails, just have the other two evenly spaced in the center. And it, uh, you don't want to come into your exposure right here because then you have a shiner and you don't want a high nail. Uh, you want to get the common bond area and the common bond area in our shingle is really easy to identify. So if you go from the top sealant line down to your exposure, you're going to be in that common bond area every single time. Okay. So again, do an inch there and then you can do two evenly spaced inch there. So you did a six nail application, which is fine, but out of the box, we only require a four nail, a four nail application to get that same 130 wind warranty. Right. But, but that's a fine install right there. So to work your way up for your offsets, we're gonna cut six inches off the rest of these shingles. Right. Well, we, we can go down, let's, let's go down here. So let's, on this one, let's put four nails in. Okay, and this one, now you install a flush, right? Yep. Flush with the starter. There you go. And two more evenly spaced. Perfect. So let's uh, let's finish off that one end down there, and we will just get a quick measurement. There you go. Perfect. I have a question. Sure. What's the coldest temperature I can install your shingles to, uh, in the winter time? Well, that's a great question. There's a lot of misinformation out there in the market today. So you can, you can install shingles in any temperature you want to, sure. really, but there's a few things that you have to be considerate of when it gets too cold. So you have shingle brittleness, right? It'll crack, it won't be as flexible. And most importantly, your sealant line is not gonna activate to hold your other shingle down. So what we recommend is uh, to have the sealant line activate 40 degrees and above, okay. all right? But you can install shingles in colder weather as long as you go back and put some asphalt cement to aid in that sealing process until the shingles can actually seal, you know, get warm enough and actively seal. So, um, you know, really to directly answer your question, you can install shingles in, in any temperature. Just be very curious and conscious of some of the things, some of the pitfalls. You can How does it affect the warranty? Because uh, well, let's say I install it at 45 degrees yep. and they never seal. Right and we have a warranty claim, is it my responsibility or manufacturer's responsibility to take care of it? If you install this uh, per our manufacturing instructions in-, in uh, Which we, is 45 in, degrees. Yeah, which is 45 degrees and above. And if the temperature's that way, then if, of course it's a, it's, a, it's a legitimate warranty claim, okay. right? So it's the manufacturer. If you install this in 20 degrees, for example, and you don't go back and follow our installation instructions by not uh, sealing it, yep. then it's the installers. But if you go back and seal it, um, and then it thermally activates and it fails, again, and manufacturers warranty. See, the challenge I have, we're in Minnesota and I've seen yeah. a lot of winter application because if you install it in October, even at 45 or f even 55 right. degrees, you still don't have enough sun. Right. I mean, you might have two weeks left and then you go for four or five months. Right. Technically, you do it right, but you still have a risk. I mean, yeah. you have risk. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we use a very aggressive sealing line okay. and then the way that we're sealing actually back to the back surface. So will it seal at 50 degrees? Absolutely. It will. Yep. It'll, I mean it's, it's going to take a little bit more time. Usually in the, you know, in the summertime they can be sealed by the time you get off the roof, right? Sure. You, know, you know in the winter time if it's 45, 50 degrees it's going to take a little bit longer but it, you know, it, you know it's going to thermally activate and seal but anything colder than that you can certainly install shingles in cold weather but just be you know be very very careful that you go back and hand seal those shingles. Awesome. Let's keep going. 
So what are you going to give me, six inches? Yeah. So we're going to do the uh, six inch offset and then we're going to save the pieces that we cut. So let's, oh, let's go ahead and start this up. So here's your, so here's your first piece and, and you know, simply we just took six inches off of it, sure. right? So you want to go ahead and, uh, and install it like you do. So go ahead and lay it up. So how much, uh, am I supposed to see that edge or? Um, yeah, this is, so this is your exposure. So um, you want to be right on this edge right here. So now you have your six inch offset. We're going to save this piece. We're not going to throw it away. So you can either save it up here on the roof, go ahead and install this, come all the way down to your exposure, wherever that line is. Now you have a true six inch exposure on your shingle. Again, four nails, 136 nails, um, you know, set the code. Perfect. Now we're going to take the next shingle and we're going to do the same thing, but take 12 inches off. Perfect. Let's finish it off. So and those starters, go, this starter is going to go here, right? That's uh, the, the, uh, we're, going to, we're going to save the smaller pieces, got it, got it. work up from big to small. Got it. Just take both of these, I forgot which one it was. Might be. Yeah, so you know we finish that course off, which is fine. But you know, you know what we want to happen is to really to do your offsets first, and then do your courses going down the yep. run. It just makes it a lot easier for the installer. Absolutely. So let's take that. So we, uh, so here we took the uh, 12 inches off. So we'll put that up there. Here's our six-inch piece. We'll throw that right there. So let's just continue with our offset. Where's the 12 inch? So we're going to do, uh, this is going to be the 18 inch. So we got 6, 12, yeah. 18. So let's put this guy on there. So now what you want to do is just reuse your pieces. So again, now you want to start with the big piece because the way it fits. Yep. And line this up, and this is going to, going to uh, alleviate you throwing all this stuff in a dumpster. So put you can you can probably get away with three nails here, and then let's start with the 12 inch piece. Three nails. We can put one right there in the middle. And then lastly, you're going to have your six inch piece. We don't want to throw that guy away. We can reuse it. And I usually tack one right up here just uh, to give it a little bit more protection in the wind. So now you have a seven course, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven course, six inch offset. You're not throwing anything away. And then you're going to go your courses right down your roof like that. Let's talk about um, hip and reach. 
So you have the same heap and reach, I guess, for most of your products, or? Yeah, we do. And, you know, what we do, we put Scotch Guard in all of our hip and ridge, so, so it matches our product. To stay with the Scotch Guard warranty, you have to have Scotch Guard hip and ridge. You need Scotch Guard on, on all your exposed components. Okay. So your, your field singles and your hip and ridge. So we put it in all of our hip and ridge. You know, in the way that our um, hip and ridge is um, manufactured is, is just, just perforated. All you do is fold it, peel it. Hmm. Lay it up, nail it down. You want to have a five and five eighths inch exposure, which is uh, you know just covering the ceiling on there. So, uh, perfect. Rip it. Sure. And you're ready to go. Okay. So you would install it. I mean, if this would be our obviously, this yeah. does not. Yeah. So you know you would need um, you need ventilation if you know according to code. You know you put your ventilation on there. If you have ridge ventilation, you might have another form of ventilation, but you would put sure. it on there. And then you just fold it over that way, and then you put uh, you put your nails in right uh, right below the sealant line there. How many you supposed um, to? Just just one nail on each side. Okay. And then you want to do your five and five inches inch exposure, which is right right by the sealant line there. Make okay. sure they're evenly aligned right through here, so you have a uniform appearance. And then your hip and ridge goes on just like this. What mistakes do you see as a manufacturer? Like, of, what installers are doing wrong? that voids the warranty or improper installation when it comes yep. to hip and ridge? So for our hip and ridge, uh, primarily it's, it's for the Scotch Guard. You have to use our Scotch Guard hip and ridge for the Scotch Guard warranty. But in general purposes, um, you see a lot of people um, misaligning their exposure, and then they're going to use a lot more shingles going down the, uh, down the field, down the course. Sure. Right? Or they're putting the, uh, nails in the proper location. So they can either um, cheat the exposure or sometimes you even see it a little bit long and if you're not touching that sealant line it's not going to seal it's not going to seal properly so you're just barely covering it yes barely covering it yep and then nail where, where yep. is it supposed to nail again so right there underneath the sealant line okay yep on both sides okay so what what does it leave me like half an inch or so it probably leaves you uh, a little bit like a half inch if you get your five and five inches inch exposure probably leaves you a little bit probably just about a half inch i think it, that answers the question do, do you have any requirements for um valleys we do so if you're using laminate shingles you can use a california cut you can use an open valley you can use a closed valley um, what, can, what, what's recommended by you guys? Um, any, any of those three is fine. Doesn't matter. But what you can't use is a weed valley with laminate shingles. You can't. It, you cannot. It just doesn't, it, it doesn't overlay properly. So um, be, because of the nature and the um, aesthetics of the shingle, it's not going to lay flat and you'll get water underneath that. So can you, in, in wind. Can you overlay architectural shingles over three tab without removing three tabs to get your warranty? You can, absolutely. You can? Yep, yep. So uh, you can put, it's over one layer of three tab shingles. Okay. Um, it's critical. They have to be flat, so they, and they have to be repaired. If they're damaged, if they're curling, it has to be a flat surface. Um, and you have to uh, pay attention to your nail size as well. Because you're going through two shingles now, you have to make sure that nail penetrates an eighth of an inch into the bottom side of your deck. Okay. So make sure you use longer nails. Which is, well, inch and a quarter will penetrate yeah. at least that. Yeah, but it's just something to be conscious of. So, sure. You know, when you're going through the double laminate or single laminate and going through a, through a three tab, you know, you don't but want to But it's not going to avoid the warranty. It's not going to avoid the warranty. Okay. Um, but again, it's a single three tab in good condition, um, according to all building codes, laying flat, those types of things. So if it's 20 years old, 20 year old roof, you don't have to remove it. You can lay over. That's right. The warranty will be there. Yep. Interesting. Absolutely. Okay. I think that answers most of my questions. We covered the valley. Any recommendation on the penetrations, like if when pipe boots, vents like that? Um, um, you know, just make sure you flash around all the pipe boots and the vents. Just you know, just make sure you do. Uh, but as a as a as a manufacturer, you don't have any like instructions that this is how you do the both like we don't we don't we just uh we recommend you follow armor best practices for flashing around okay. chimneys and boots and those types of things you know as long as you follow those guidelines you'll be in good shape okay so nothing on the do like your instructions that or your warranty doesn't have anything about chimney flashing dormer flashing when it meets siding it's pretty much building best practices that's right yep Okay, I think you answered most of my questions. Um, anything else you want to add? What we didn't cover as far as installation goes? Um, Common mistakes or? 
You know, common mistakes is, you know, cheating on your exposure. And, um, you know, we have a six inch exposure, which makes it easy math as you go up the courses, six, 12, 18, snapping those chalk lines. Sure. Um, you know, a lot of competitors out there have five and five ace or some sort of metric. And what installers are doing, they can't do five and five ace three times, right? Can you do that in your head? It's kind of hard to do it sure. and with a tape measure. They're going down to five and a half, which is, which is easy math. And then when you get to the when you get to the end, you usually a bundle or two short. So that's one of the things we have a six inch exposure. Um, if you if you stay true to that, you'll use a lot less shingles on your roof than a standard five and five eighths inch exposure. Uh, we see um, improper nail placement, you know, a lot of times. Um, cold weather applications if they're not following the guidelines we uh, talked about earlier for sealing. Uh, but those are primarily the things that you're going to see. Most complaints you guys get is about the sealant line and uh, gunk in the nail guns. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, we get that and we've addressed it. So we've spaced our sealant line on top and, and what we asked I see, to do... I see that. It used to be way thicker. Yeah, absolutely. So we spaced this. So what we asked you to do is from the top sealant line, from the bottom of the top sealant line to your spurs, you can put that nail anywhere you want. Uh, we kind of recommend right through here to get just that, just that clean sure. time bond. But the reason why we do that is we put our sealant line on top because what we're sealing to is the glass mat of the shingle, the bones of the shingle itself. It's what holds the whole shingle together. So we're not saying that we're going to have our uh, sealant line sealed directly to granules because we know what happens to granules over time. Sure. Right? You walk on a roof, they fall off, right? They come off. That's what happens when shingles age. Um, asphalt oxidizes, the granules come off. And if you're sealing directly to granules, you're gonna, it's going to be less and less effective. We're sealing thermally bonding right to fiberglass. So you get that true bond every single time, and that's why we do it on top. We do a lot of testing here at our technical center in our wind tunnel here right next door to us. Um, you, know, you know, that proves that case every single day. You know, so, you know, we just go the extra mile. We put two, two sealing lines on there just for extra protection. And that really what gives us our advantage to offer four nails at 130 mile an hour wind warranty. Okay, awesome.